Oh no. Or rather. Oh no. It's a board game. So, and even worse, it's not even a board game with an actual cardboard board. That's a paper map. This is Sicily 2. And if I zoom out, I'm holding my hand on the camera, so it's shaking a little bit. Maybe I should turn on, like, focus stuff. But if I zoom out, you'll see it's a map of Sicily with a lot of little hexagons. Those are the spaces on the board. And the big deal about this game, or not the big deal, but just of this game is it's a war game. And I'm going to explain this in broad terms first and then get in the nitty gritty as we go on. Yeah, I need to get my co-star in view. So you may notice that orange fur. Behold Utah Raptor. Utah Raptor will help me explain the game, right? Right. Um, so what is all this then? And this is going to be a very rough, raw stream because of reasons I'll get into. Namely, I haven't played this in a while. This is not, this is kind of a rush setup. But we'll see how it goes. Anyways. So, what's the deal here? Uh, Sicily 2 is part of the Operational Combat series. And, which is a series of war games that covers game wars from 1900 to 1950, roughly. According to the rules book, shucks, I just knocked a piece around. Don't mind me. Just going to fix that. I think this had one damage. Yes. Okay. Anyways. Yeah, they have a. They have an introduction from 1900 to the mid-1950s. As far as I can tell, the games only have to cover World War II and Korea, though. I haven't seen any World War I ones yet, which is interesting. I wonder if they'll ever get around to that. It seems like they're trying to cover the uh, World War II campaigns. So campaigns being like... Uh, like... Um, well, what's a good one? Uh, the campaign for Sicily. So a campaign, rough, in this case, it's taking roughly from July 10th to August 21st. So how many, that's roughly what, a month of maneuvers taken. So the scale roughly is half a mile hexes? No, 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 five mile hexes. Let me see if I remember the scale here. Turns are measured are covering basically half a week of combat. 3.5 miles per hex. And two turns per week. And don't and ignore the noises. That's just people outside the building or the apartment. Um, what else of note here? Uh, Utah Raptor is not part of the game. That should be noted. Um, we have a bunch of little accessories. So this game actually came with a magazine. Uh, let's see if I have said magazine lying around. But it's actually part of a magazine called Operational Matters. And I had it just a moment ago. Oh, it's on my chair. Um, yeah, so Operational Matters and Operational Combat Series Guide. Part of, oh yeah, this is published by Multiman Publishing, which owns the Advanced Squad Leader franchise. Squad Leader being a classic Avalon Hill game from 1970, late 1970s, turned into Advanced Squad Leader in the 80s, and then kind of got too complicated, and they made starter kits in the 2000s, and it's, so they still have the main complicated version. But they also have, they also publish the games from the gamers who 
have quality war games since 1988, according to their tagline. But yeah, the gamers are um, they're known to make uh, these kind of complicated, you know, hex grid war games of like a uh, operational scale. Hmm. Let's see. One fun thing about these games is I feel like a lot of multiplayer matches get played on um, get played online instead of like in person because this is a game that despite what you, that you might be surprised takes a while to play like leave it out on the table and play for multiple days kind of thing we'll be lucky depending on how far we get, and we'll be lucky to see how far we get here. Anyways, but that's okay. We'll see where we go. Uh, first thing I want to talk about is components. So we got a map. Uh, the map is under... All right, Utah Raptor, you're going to have to get out of view for a second. Yeah, maybe I can put Utah Raptor in view... Kind of closer, yeah, whatever. So the map is under, first off, it's a paper map. Uh, it's filled with hexes. The hexes have little coordinates. So like, there's a 32.20 there. Um, like here. Um, that means that's like left to right 32 and up and down 20. Uh, every five rows uh, has numbers on them to indicate so you can keep track of where your pieces are. It's important for like setup and stuff like set up this piece in hex 30 and you know in position in hex 6 5 or whatever. Beyond that, it mostly just count the hexes for stuff. Okay, what else? Since it's a paper map, and since it has folds, you can actually see a little bit of them here. If I zoom in just right, like, you can kind of see the creases a little bit. Um. Well, we're stacking little tiny counters on them that represent the armies, or in this case, the uh, subsets of armies, like the troops. All these little troops and let's zoom in on like, you know, you can see like this guy, that's a troop. There's even little pieces under him. So we have towers of these little squares. Right? Um, well, turns out a foldy map is a little bit that, a little bit hard to stack really tall stacks. Like, look how big, um, like, look how tall this one is. Look how many pieces are there. If you had a bendy map, that would just fall over flat. So, I actually have this plexiglass, this transparent plexiglass. Um, holding, keeping the map down. I actually have three sheets of it. Uh, cut like a, what is it? Like a foot by foot and a half or so of a uh, heck plexi. No, that's not right. Two by one, I think. Or 18 by 24, something like that. It's not important. But point being, um, so some, so we're going to go over not only the components of the game, but the components I am using to play this game. Uh, we have a camcorder for the actual scene. And then I have like a little TV tuner thing to hook up to the computer to stream it. Got a folding table. Uh, again, I think we're getting a little bit expansive on the scope here. Um, we have a computer. So I'm going to play some music. Uh, lower volume. Um, 
What can we have playing in the background video game? Let's do EOE soundtrack for a little bit. Not getting through. Now I know this game is not picking it up. Canceling is going to ruin that too hard. Sorry. Uh, I might have to do this without music. Or I have a better idea. Oh, desktop audio is perfect. I totally forgot that the desktop audio was uh, on, so that probably had some awful echo noise. But that's okay. Anyways, what am I talking about? So, um, paper map, plexiglass for the paper map, which makes a nice little tapping noise. But since the tapping noise is um, uh, bad for, it doesn't work with dice too well, we have dice. The game comes with little, well the game doesn't actually come with dice because it came with a magazine. I have these dice in a whiskey glass. Uh, it only needs two dice two dice, but we have a third die for uh, just a bonus roll if it's needed. So, you know, I just shake the glass and we have dice rolls. Exciting! Um, other things... So we got dice. I I could throw the dice in the die tray or dice tray too. I have a nice felt one here. But whiskey glass is kind of fun. It's a broken one anyway, so it's not just gonna crack. Here's the dice tray. Um, other things I have little tile spacers in a case in case I wanna mark certain spots on the map. They actually recommend that because this is a game full of accessorization. Isn't that fun? Um, what other nonsense? Um, let's see. We've got. So that's the general components. We have the square cardboard counters, which I'll get into detail on what they do in a sec. Oh yeah, we have the rule book, which in the player aids, so player aids being like charts and tables and stuff. So for the rule book, oh, we have the magazine came in. The magazine just it tells you like all the tactical situations and like has a bunch of articles about the history of the games and stuff like that. Which is cool, but with the rule book inside it. Now the thing about the rule book, there's actually two rule books. One for the series rules, like oh here's how the general rules work. If you think of Dungeons and Dragons, it's like the player's manual. But then it also comes with a uh, smaller rule book for the game scenario, like. There's a rule book for, there's a series rule book, and then there's the rule book for, say, Sicily 2. Annoyingly enough, the rule book is inside the magazine, so instead of having to deal with that, I printed out the rule book on these handy dandy sheets of paper with a printer, believe it or not. And they'll tell me the specific rules like the weather, how the landing works, um, what coastal defense units do. We might not even play this game today. I just go over the rules. It's so much. But we'll see. Hopefully we will. Um, 
What other fun things can we do? Um, okay. So here's the thing about this game. There's some games that gamers joke are uh, things you marry to because they're so involved. Uh, this is one of them, one of those series. The operational combat series is not an easy to... is not a simple rule set. <laughs> Uh, like, when I say board game streams, which is what we're doing today, um, well, uh, there's stuff like, on one end you have, like, Catan, which is like a four, six-page rulebook or something, with big text and pictures and examples. Not my type of game. Um, but I prefer slightly more complicated. You have stuff like Dominion... No, also a pretty small rulebook, but a little bit more involved. Uh, but let's just skip ahead to the to in, to where we're at. Um, the rulebook is divided into legalese, kind of, where like you have the rules are case numbered. So, like, if I want to go flip to ground movement, I go to rule section six point zero, and if I want to talk about moving ground units. There's like a section 6.1, and then subcase is 6.1a, b, so on and so forth. Um, this rulebook also has page numbers. It is 56 pages long. It used to be only 40 or something, but they increased the font so you didn't like blow your eyes out. Actually, I probably should put on my glasses for this because there are some tiny pieces there, and I'm going to have to lean really close or you know wear my glasses. I'm a little nearsighted. Even if I wasn't, this would be in your side, I swear. Um, so we got a pretty involved game here, like just to look at the thickness of this rulebook. So here's the series rules. Mmm, look at that page, and here you can see the size of the font. 56 pages of this. Um, but admittedly, the um, it's not really 56 pages, it's more like 50... More like 50, because there's an index and designer notes and summaries, but yeah. Thankfully not the, uh... Interesting, they have summaries for landing craft. This is perfect for Sicily, too. Because this is one of the few games uh, with the naval aspect. Uh, this particular series focuses on, like, land and air battles, specifically land battles. Focuses on moving like regiments of troops. So like a regiment is like what roughly like a thousand people or something. So you know, like a large like a decently large army. Um, each piece is like a pretty hefty group of people moving and shooting with their trucks and tanks and guns. Uh so maybe it's time to tell you what the game's about. So, like I said, campaign game. About a campaign game about um, like uh, moving troops in World Wars Two, like army maneuvers and stuff. For some reason, the darn um, camera wants to shut off every like. 30 minutes. I gotta remember to press the button every once in a while. I have no idea why. Um, I tried to look in settings before the stream and uh, it used to not do that, so I don't know. We'll just have to leave it be. Um, anyways. So, how does the game work, if you will? Um, it's players take turns. Player, each player controls a side of the army. Uh, or a different army. One player controls the Axis, and the other controls the Allies. In this case, that would be the Italians and Germans. And then the others would be the uh, British Commonwealth and the uh, U.S. Army. Um, oh yeah, I don't have the camera zoomed in all the way. Let's see. Yeah, so you got... 
the U.S. Army, U.S. and Commonwealth over here. And you can kind of, and like the, they're color coded, so like U.S. and uh, Commonwealth are green and brown. The rule book tells you the colors if you don't know. Um, Italians are like a light blue, and the Germans are like a gray. Um, what else? So, the game goes in turns. You have several steps in a turn. Um, first off, the you got to roll to see who goes first in a single turn, which is interesting because what that means is um, a player might roll. Ah, shucks, sorry about that. A player might, uh, you know, players roll off and it's like, oh, hey, I go first this turn. And then the other guy goes second. And then um, let's say they roll again. The other guy might take uh, two turns in a row, which is really devastating in this game because the turns are very big and you move a lot of pieces at once. Um, let's see. Other fun things. So um, thankfully there's a little player aid in the form of charts and tables. Look at this. So, this is a four-page table, which is as large as some rule books, I swear. So, we've got, um, so for, I'm not going to go over it all just right now, but it's like little charts that you, there's little table, combat tables you roll on. Um, kind of reminiscent of like D&D 2 &D second edition, where it's like you had a combat table for like combat resolution. You have a lot of tables here, like you have a, uh, Artillery barrage table, a, um, let's take a look at another one. Uh, there's a capture, supply capture table, a out of supply attrition table, yada, yada, yada. But this also comes with a sequence of play. So pre-turn phase, you determine the weather, which is determined already at this turn. Whoever goes first, which I talked about. And then the game's divided into two player turns. Um, and then you end the turn. And then you keep going. And you play that over however many turns the game scenario says. In this case, up to 31, or up to 16 turns, you know, up from July 10th to August 31st. It might have been earlier based on, because there's a game rule about that. Like, there's no uniform victory conditions in these games. It's uh, determined based off which of the games you're playing in the series. Um... What other fun things? So... First part of the turn is aircraft refit phase. Um, aircraft refit is essentially... Um, well, the aircraft get to be refueled. Uh, fuel and Heat and supply is super important in this game. That's one of its big novelties. Then reinforcements come in. So like if like, uh, oh, hey, more troops are added to the board, essentially, based on what the game scenario says. Then you got the big part of the turn, the movement phase. Uh, breakout, so any un units that are uh, surrounded can have a chance to just like uh, break out, I mean, is, is what it says which basically makes them leave the board for a little bit and come back a few turns later based on a die roll. Then you have the really big part of the turn, mode and movement. So now's a good time to talk about ground units. Let's just grab one that's in the floating forces. So here's a very standard one. Ground units. Uh, let's take a look at this one. Zoom. Ah, no. What did I press? I pressed photo. Okay. So, game. Or camera. Zoom in, zoom in please. No, oh, maybe I should. Game, camera. Why is cameras hard? Okay. Camera, why don't you zoom in on this thing right in front of you, maybe. All right, maybe I'll just zoom out all the way. Okay, so here's a little piece. It's a half inch 
by half inch square counter. So pretty tiny. Um, this is a tank uh, battalion. It uses NATO symbols. Um, so that little Roman numeral two there, that indicates that it's a battalion sized unit. Uh, the oval rectangle is means it is a uh, tank uh, kind of battalion. So it's like mechanized or like, you know, filled with track units. Uh, this is the name of the group. So this is the historic, and this is historical, by the way, which is fun. This is the Calgary tank battalion, armored specifically. They call it armored, but, you know, armored is tanks. So, left number, combat value, uh, right number, movement, middle number, action rating. Um, combat is like their, their strength factor. You add the number up and then look it up, compare it to the other enemies, and then roll on a chart. The red four in case it's in a yellow square. It's the movement factor. The color coding is there because um, it indicate the red means it is a tr it means it's a uh, track movement. So it has four movement points uh, that it's allowed to use, and um, when in terrain, costs various amounts of movement points. So like you, a road might be half a movement point. So on a road, this. Tank can move up to eight squares or eight hexes. Yada yada. Um, so there's three types of movement. Uh, if it had a white number, it would be a leg movement or other movement. If it was a black number, it'd be truck movement. And if it's a red number like this, it is track movement. Uh, hmm. Come on, focus game, focus camera. I believe in you. I believe. All right. So the thing about this game is that normally a um, normally in uh, these little war games, the square counters have a flip side, and that's usually their uh, damaged side. So they have like two hit points essentially, right? You have the um, their their full healthy side and then their damage side where their numbers are reduced. This game does something different. Um, this guy only has one health, if you will, but uh, the reason it has the the flip side is actually a different mode of combat, so or mode of operation, which is why the movement face star is called mode and movement. So there are several modes of movement. Two of them are on the sides of the piece. You have combat mode, which has the higher combat number. Then you have movement mode, which has the higher move number. Oh yeah, the action rating number, the tiny one in the middle, is for like surprise attacks. So like initiative and stuff. Generally it's for like being able to surprise the opponent and also for like how well they can survive being out of supply and stuff. Okay. But we'll talk about that eventually. All right, so two modes of movement here. You have combat, and you have um, movement. Movement makes them move farther, but deal less combat, deal less damage. Combat mode lets them. Um, Combat mode makes them extend a zone of control, which makes adjacent enemies um, hard, like it pins adjacent enemies, they can't move as well. And um, usually you have a higher combat value, which is nice. So, um, other things. Other things like I need to drink my coffee. Coffee, come here. Mm. Tastes like coffee and cream and sugar. Why why would that be? Alright. So more fun things to talk about. 
Oh yeah, combat numbers have a can have a different flavor of uh, of coding. Um, if it has a yellow embossed or it has a black number embossed in yellow, that means it's not a combat number; it's artillery. Because there's barrages in this game, they're very important sometimes. Um, other things, oh yeah, the little NATO symbol, that like square oval. Uh, normally it doesn't matter what the uh, symbol is, like the fact that this says LT doesn't matter. The fact that it is red though does. Um, if a symbol is just like standard looking, it doesn't have any, um, it's just like the same color as the background like this, it's just tan. That just means it is normal kind of armor rating. But like since tanks are metal and made of armor, they can be embossed, they can have a yellow background like the first piece we saw. Here it is for reference, see how it has a little yellow oval right there? Alright, so that means it's a, uh, I believe called a... the exact terminology but it comes in three flavors normal red and yellow uh, normal sort of takes the lead kind of normal is like infantry um, red is like trucks and stuff and then yellow is like full-on tanks and uh, or mechanized and armor I think is the, is the phrase they use let me see let me remind myself how the and that affects combat and stuff like and getting barraged and all of that good stuff. Uh, one annoying thing about this setup is the little cable I have hooked up to the box to record everything is shorter, is, doesn't reach the ground, so every time I have to move, I have to hop over it. It's a little irksome. Thankfully, I don't have to move too much. Armor, mech, and other is the. Um, are the three uh, battle classes, combat modes, and then the uh, movement ones are called track, truck, and leg. That's the uh, phrases I was looking for. Alright, well. So units have all these little stats and stuff, you know, you have their combat, you have your movement, you have like their specialty rating, uh, they have flip side, they have two modes they can flip into. But there's also extra modes, because this game doesn't merely have army counters, it also has status markers. So you might have um, a quick movement mode called strategic mode, it's denoted by this little arrow, and you just, if you want to denote that a unit or a group of units is under strategic mode, you, know, you, just, you just cover the stack with it, like that. So preferably you use some tweezers. Oh yeah, I forgot about the tweezers. So there's like these little hobby plier tweezer things, right? These are really good for picking up groups of counters that are right next to each other so you don't like think have to like grab them with your like little claw hand and knock over all the other pieces. OCS? You like OCS? Yeah. Me too. I'm explaining it. In general, broad terms, because normally I'm a video game channel, but yeah, unless you're talking about OCs, which also, you know, those are fine too. Yeah, those Operational Combat series is fun. I don't play it enough, though. Um, but that's okay. Alright, other things about this. So we have, so I've talked about combat mode, move mode. Stratego mode, strategic mode, it's called, it's called strat mode or something. Strategic movement. And strategic movement basically doubles their move mode, but like you can't fight during it. Tweezers and tile spacers, yeah, I have tile spacers. But I don't actually use them in the way to like space the counters, but I do have like, um, But I do have them for like marking pieces and stuff. I'm not really sure what tile spacers actually do. I'm getting a phone call. Ah, uh, one second. I have to answer this probably.
Sorry about that wait. Um, spam caller or just like random, random junk call. Always fun. All right, let's talk about more things. Um, so other OCS fun stuff. So you have movement mode, strat mode. You have two modes that you can um, that you can't voluntarily assign during the turn. Um, you have if you barrage an enemy, you can disorganize them, mark them with this little DG marker with little explosions in the background. If you do well enough in a combat, you can get a explosion of arrows with a number on it, and that's called exploitation mode. And that lets you move a second time, essentially. And uh, the number on it, the lower it is, the better, because basically if a unit has an action rating equal to or higher than that counter number, so like if a unit had an action rating of 4 or 5 or 6, you go up to 6 for what it's worth. No, they go up to five, actually. I don't think I've seen a six action rate. I don't know. Anyways, long story short, um, exploitation mode lets you move a second time if you have that action rating. Um, and then there is a super special limited marker, limited time only mode called reserve mode. Which I'm just gonna have to handy dandily snatch from over here, because all the reserve markers are, of course, on the other side. So, reserve mode is a mode you can voluntarily go into, but you only have a limited amount in the game. Uh, so, like, at the start of the game, there's going to be zero reserve mode markers, and starting on turn two, there will be eight for each side. Reserve mode lets you. Um, reserve mode basically lets you move during that exploitation bonus move step. So like you can uh, put a unit in reserve mode, and while they have like move at less effectiveness, they can essentially you know are in reserve to move after everybody else, and it lets for tactical advantage. And you can only put a limited amount of stacks under reserve, stacks of troops. So you don't have, so it's not like per unit, it's like per unit hex, essentially. Yeah. This is not trying to go over very specific rules. I'm not trying to necessarily teach the game on stream. I'm just trying to go over points of the game. And it'll still take forever to talk about because there's a lot in this game. And eventually I'll be moving pieces and that'll be fun. But... Well, hopefully. I don't know how long the stream is going to go, but we'll see. Um, so different modes of move. That's an important part. I technically have talked about this game before and how it works. Now we're going to get AC in the background. I'm sorry about that. Hopefully the noise filter on the camera masks some of that. That's doing fine. Okay. So, um, I'm just looking for the rules. Um, so yeah, let's talk about. So yeah, reserve mode lets you move sacks. What are other fun things to talk about? Um. Other fun unit types and markers, there are, so we talked about the combat units, uh, there's also air units that fly around and stuff. They don't really move on the map and stay in one hex per turn, they kind of just teleport because they're fast and they fly. So like this unit doesn't, ha while it does have a range that it travels to, so here's a air unit, the Baltimore. The corner here, that T, means it's a tactical bomber, I think. The parenthetical 2 is its attack rating for other aircraft and stuff. It's parenthetical because this unit only can defend. The 4 is its barrage rating because it's a bomber. 
that th triple digit number of 136 is its range in hexes, not in movement points, just in full hexes. So it basically, given how big this map is, can cross pretty much the entire map. Though there are some rules that make it a little bit spicier in range. There's a bunch of range rules and stuff for air travel. Other fun things, um, there's some other special units. So there's headquarter units that fuel everybody else. There's rear repair units that we don't play with in this game, particular scenario. Artillery units, I already talked about them. Replacement units, there. there's like a special rule in this game, so you don't really use those, but like you have units that don't like have any combat prowess until like they join their troop, their army, or join their uh, regiment. Engineer units, I forget if they're actually in this game in any significant way. I think there's some. Breakdown units. So like, one other thing I forgot to mention about this is some pieces represent armies that are so big, they have more than one uh, step of damage. This one has four. That's what that yellow four means. And it's not focusing because this camera is finicky sometimes. But anyways, that yellow circled four means that guy has four steps of damage and take or four steps of troop loss, I guess. But it also means that it can divide itself into, into little pieces, and so it can take a step loss, uh, like one point of damage, if you will, uh, to divide into um, a breakdown unit, which is like a tiny part of the, of the troop. What do we have here? You become an Elden Lord when you win, right? Yeah! Um, well, it, well, no, this is more like Call of Duty. It's not Elden Ring. I mean, if we're going to be, let's see, what snarky video game comparison can I make? Actually, there is one, um, there is one, <laughs> um, uh, fun way to describe victory in this game where it's like, tally the points, and depending on how many points you have determines what level of victory you have. If you won... By more than 14 points, the other player has to quit playing this game at forever, this game series, and has to buy you a beer and, and be shamed. So that's a, that's a fun one. But yeah, Chill Saber, if you weren't here, this is a um, World War II map game. Yeah, it's more like Risk, or uh, if we're doing computer board game stuff... Um, you know, like Hex Encounter, you ever play a, you know, Civilization or Endless Legend or any of those hex grid games? This game has little hex grids, and you move the little pieces on them. Those little, num those little square counters are actually like troops of people, and they move around on hexes, and you can have stacks of them. So, you know, it's like, civ uh, it's like the battle part of Civilization was made into a very in-depth game. Which is funny because this is technically like describe itself as like we want to simulate, but we also want to keep it relatively streamlined. And for everything this game tries to simulate, it's pretty straightforward. Uh, yeah. So uh, to refresh, this game comes with this game is part of a series. So once you learn the big part of the rules, you don't have to learn like the game over and over again for each version of... So, like, it's like how there's a player manual in Dungeons & Dragons or something to make a very loose comparison. So, like, you know, once you know the player's manual, you don't have to learn Dungeons & Dragons every time you sit down. Um, but the thing is, the series rules here for each of the games is still a 50-page rulebook that looks something like this in gray font and stuff. Has like examples and things like gray pictures, but yeah, here's a rule book. Mmm, look at all those pages. Yeah, 
You know, it's kind of like that, actually. I think there was an NES game that was super complicated. Um, the Koei Tecmo guys, um, Koei especially, before they merged, uh, made strategy games. One was called, like, Nobunaga's Ambition. And um, this is, like, in that vein, that genre of game, whereas that was, like, the, you know, Sengoku period of Japan. This is World War II, which is very different stuff. Oh yeah, TI. Good old Twilight Imperium. Very different game, but yeah, kind of that similar idea. Is we're talking we're in the deep end of board games, y'all. Alright, what else? I'm gonna press this button again. No, no, stop it. Go away. How do I exit this? Stop it. Stop it, camera. Why did I do that? No, no uh, one second. I messed up. Sorry about that nonsense. Yeah. So that's, so it actually comes with two rule books, one for like the game series, so like, you know, you can play Sicily 2 or you can play uh, uh, Tunisia instead. It's so like you can play the different uh, maps and stuff, right? But it also comes with a, uh, also comes with a rule book. This rule book came with a magazine, so I printed out the, that's why it's just a loose sheet of paper here. But this one just tells you the specific rules of Sicily 2, uh, which is, it's called Sicily 2 because they made a board game about this same battle, um, this same campaign, but they uh, redid it, thus the two. There was, but yeah, it has rules about like landings and holding boxes, or rather off map pieces and stuff like that. Um, other fun things this game has. So, before we start, or we might not, I don't know, I'm debating how involved I want to get in the summary of this game um, for stream, because it might just be one of those, um, might just be one of those, like, just explain the overview of what I'm doing here. Uh, for what it's worth, I'm not really playing with anybody else. In essence, this is a mock playthrough, um, or just a solo run where I'm just moving both sides against each other. Uh, there are there are board games like this that uh, you play against the board, like you know the board. You roll dice like a soft computer, like an algorithm, you know, like a flow chart. It's like okay, roll the dice. The enemy moves left and right, and all of that. This is not one of those. This is like. This is a two-player game. You are supposed to have somebody sitting beside you and waiting their turn very patiently, eating lunch and drinking beer, while the other player slowly moves their pieces because the turns here are massive. Um, other fun things? So, uh, I talked about the pieces, they move around, but you also have air units. They teleport around and bomb stuff. There's actually little yellow... Circles, where's my tweezers? It's buried under the rule book. Yeah. Anyways, so like this little thing here, um, which we can zoom in on. See that one here? Is that showing on the map? Yeah. That is a level one air base. And aircraft can land there, and uh, nobody's landing there right now because it's way too close to the. Uh, that's the German and Italian air bases, and it's way too close to the U.S. troops. So I didn't put any air bases there at the start of the game because that seemed like a silly idea. And air and aircraft have such a range of this game, I might as well just protect other stuff. So there is a whole thing about like um, aircraft have a patrol zone of ten hexes in these games no matter like what their printed range is. So you do want to have aircraft relatively spread out in a certain sense. Um, other fun stuff, aircraft. This game has a very huge naval aspect. 
Um, we'll be landing the U.S. and British troops, or the Commonwealth, I think they're, they refer to. I'm not, I'm kind of tacky with, like, terminology in these games. Like, I'm a very big amateur when it comes to, like, actually playing the series. Or war games in general, so I have, like, really bad, uh, like, I'm not gonna, I'm gonna miss name things pretty easily. Yeah, you absolutely do. It's 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 like you know how like Twilight Imperium is a super long game. It's, this is a game you leave out on the table and do sessions of. Axis and allies for what's a tem? I don't know what a tem is. This is but this is like uh yeah. You'll see how long this... Oh yeah, where's the soundtrack at? Because I've been playing it for a while. It's not playing. Yes, thank you. I have it muted because I don't really have a way to play the soundtrack and... Uh, for the microphone to capture it. <sighs> Twilight Imperium takes a while, but the turns are quick. Uh, this game has like really blocky terms. Turns. Turns. Um, but like Twilight Imperium is still like a 12 hour game, 8 to 12 hour game, depending on player count and stuff. Um, so, before I go into like some naval landings, we have like landing craft and stuff. There's rules for that that we'll get, that we'll be executing. The bit, and there's airdrops and stuff too. There's transport. The big thing about this game is the notion of supply. So, unlike, say, uh, your generic war games, like, let's point to Axis and Allies, maybe. Three to five? Damn. Y'all are good. What's, what was your player count, though? Because, like, six or eight player Twilight Imperium takes a while. Um, anyways. And then again, I don't know if fourth edition makes the game quicker or not. I played third. And that, that's how long those games took. Um, a four or five player Twilight Imperium, I can see that being a three to five hour game. Like six or eight, that, that goes on for a while, especially third edition. Anyways, speaking of board games, this one. Um, so, there's these items, so unlike uh, Axis and Allies, um, or any of that stuff, uh, this game, actually, you have to fuel uh, and supply your troops... Uh, both for whenever, like, trucks and tanks move, or, uh, and or when, um, anything fights. So, because, you know, they gotta, you gotta fuel the guns and you gotta fuel the, the cars. So, uh, there's actually supply depots in this game denoted by supply points. Uh, this one is, come on, all right, yeah. This one here... If it zoom focuses in, game, please focus. Camera, that is. Why am I just saying this is a game? Camera's not a game. Camera's... All right, so this is a two-point supply depot. Or supply token, or supply point. They're just called... They're just called points. And supply points can be subdivided into quarters called tokens. Uh, so this one T here... If it will show, and if my finger can show it, come on. So this says, uh, so this says one T, basically. That means it is one quarter of a supply point. Um, yeah, they're not victory points. They're actually the resources you have to spend to attack. So like. Uh, if you're attacking, if you want to fuel all the cars around you, you have to spend a supply point. Um, if you want to, or more, if you want to fuel an attack, you have to spend uh, one or two tokens, or which is like one or two quarters, or even more if you're attacking. And like, there's supply points under some of these stacks of counters and stuff because you want to protect them. Because if another, because if the enemy moves over the supply depots, they get the supply points and stuff like that. Um. 
And then there, you can also transport the supply points. They're not just static on the ground. Like uh, if you have truck units under all of these that look something like, where are my truck points? So like here's a little truck guy has a carrying capacity of two supply points and has 45 movement, which is a lot, but trucks have to spend a lot of movement points to pick up stuff. Um, so you can move supply points around. You'll need them if you want to move units. So supply is a huge consideration in this series of games. Um, Sicily 2 uh, also has the added factor of naval landings. Like, basically this was a joint operation between the Commonwealth and the U.S. Like, this is not just like a made-up scenario. This is like historical recounting, essentially. And it tries to simulate all of the stuff that happened. To a loose sense, while still being a playable game. Well, theoretically playable. We'll see if we ever get to it. Um... So, this was a joint operation between the U.S. and Commonwealth to um, get Sicily back from the Axis. And then um, the Germans and Italians were retreating from Sicily. The goal for the German and Italian for the Axis side is to retreat, um, to like deal as much damage while they were retreating, and then the uh, Allies to not get like to damage to take the areas without loot without major losses. There's like a whole little mini rule set for like the victory points in this game. So that's a thing. Um, combat. Uh, if you've ever played any of the games where like there's a chart, a combat table that you have to like add up the combat values for for forces and then roll on a chart. That's this game. Um, actually should probably get more table space, but that's okay. So like, what you do in this game is you calculate the odds. So like, um, let's say I add up all the combat rate, combat ratings of like, uh, let's say, um, Let's say these troops want to attack, and I added up all the values on little pieces. They were attacking like an invisible unit here. There's no invisible units, but let's say I put a unit here and they were attacking. We add them all up. We add up. We make. We compare the odds of the attacker versus the defender. We look at the terrain they're fighting in, and then roll the dice. And look at this little chart here. Little, tiny, tiny chart. Tiny, tiny chart. reference that's the huge that's it and it's filled with attack combat results like how like if you roll low the attacker loses units if you roll high the defender loses units and has to retreat um there's also before you resolve the die roll you actually roll to see if the units and like if any of the um, troops get surprised and that's a very dangerous roll because um of this basically Let's go back to this little chart here. If, for instance, the odds are 12 to 1 on very close terrain, um, and I roll a 7, um, the attacker loses one point and has to either retreat or lose one point, and the defender has to maybe lose one point or retreat, or something like that. Um, but a surprise roll basically means, um, if there's a surprise, um, it shifts the columns of these, um, it shifts, it shifts the column this odds ratio is on. So let's say I roll a die and I get a surprise roll of six. I go one, two, three, four, five, six, and now it counts as like if it was a 52 to one combat odds or something like that. So surprise can make a huge difference. It's a it's a complicated chart. It's it's a little daunting. 
It, but it's uh, it actually makes a lot of sense once I, once you do the process of combat. It's just a little involved. Like terrain matters, the surprise rating matters, the combat ratio matters. So it's like a little bit of arithmetic, a little bit of die rolling, a little bit of prayer. Hmm. So yeah, there's combat. There's going to be error attacks and stuff that are a lot simpler. Like the combat's the most involved die roll process in the game, really. Oh yeah, you have to spend supply points for each side to attack, and it increases and decreases their odds depending on that. So that's fun. Um, can we play now? Let me just do that. So that the camera doesn't shut down. Um, yeah, so, what now? Um, so, in this particular scenario, all the green and tan pieces here are landing on the beaches of Sicily or the coast of Sicily trying to um, kind of make a land a foot a landing foot there's actually a whole box here called the floating forces box and it has like so many units in it like take a look look at all these pieces and they all initially came land and the ones that land here initially came from this box yeah have a good one um, I'll just be narrating my attempt to play this. It's not going to be finished at all by the time I finish this stream, but I might not even make a dent in it today. I need to reread the rules for one. But I figured I'd set it up and get at least a test stream going of this game. We'll see. Anyways, have a good one. So, um... I believe this game already has is already into the movement phase of the turn. Like like basically this scenario says, okay, set up the pieces, set up their landings. The aircraft have already refit, the reinforcements already came in. We are at the point where the um, naval movement has begun. But not the um, But there's still some more movement to happen. Mm. So on the first, so we basically have to the roll for landing for all of these troops. But first, we get to move the ships that are over here. Are they showing up? Yeah, they're showing up on the next to the whiskey glass. These are all ship units and aircraft carrier units, but. They're gonna fly. They're gonna move around on the blue hexes on the sea, and try to help bombard um, areas. Hmm. Streaming for an hour and a half. Not sure if I want to keep going right now. I mean, I do, but also need to take a quick break. Um, yeah, the hard part about the reason I've stalled in doing this stream, I've been meaning to do it for a while, is that it's just a very invested process, and my brain is not always prepped for OCS, and it's kind of borderline right now. Especially since I need to reread the rules a little bit, draw myself how to play, and I need to practice being around this camera and not blocking the screen and stuff like that. Let's zoom in a little bit. So, um, the first part of the turn is going to be me rolling. Oh yeah. Uh, the on this on turn one, the uh, allies always uh, go first, and what the allies are going to be doing is rolling 
on the Amphibious Landing Table, the ALT, to see if they uh, survive their beach landings or if they take losses, because, you know, it's wartime. Um, we're also going to be rolling for the sideways units, like this one here. Those are the coastal Italian units that uh, are a little... are, like, going to automatically surrender on a bad die roll. So that's fun. Um... And then we'll do the full turn and stuff like that. Also, uh, there's some air landings happening, and we got to roll to see if they get drifted and scattered across the winds, which is a little bad. And apparently the air landings were disastrous historically, so don't expect good die rolls this time. In fact, uh, and by the end of turn two or something, uh, there's no more aircraft troop landings allowed on the game for the Allies. The uh, Axis doesn't get to do any of them, if I recall. Only supply landings. Well, what other nonsense can we do? Oh yeah, we can pet the plushie. So, since I can't really do Baby Sloth too well, well, hope, well I probably should make sure Baby Sloth isn't on the channel rewards. We have a plushie. Um, do I need to get in focus a little bit? Um, this is Utah Raptor. Utah Raptor is going to be my opponent for today. Let's see if Utah Raptor's in focus more. Yeah. There we go. Plushy pet. I think that's very important to have a silly thing while we do this nonsensical endeavor of playing a game that really is quite an intense process. Um, where are we at right now? Also, hey, Marilla. Let me uh, make sure the channel points are actually... Yeah, I can't do baby sloth right now, it's just a little... Um, so don't, don't redeem it, or else I'm going to pet a plush instead. Um, words... Disable baby sloth, I knew I was doing something wrong. There we go. <laughs> you thought it was digital version, but it was me, Dio, playing a board game. I don't think Dio talks like that. I think he goes like with a really deep voice. Sorry, Sloth, uh, Sloth is defunct until I do a digital game again. Oh, brain getting here. Let's see. Yeah, but, uh, no, I, I, I did board game streams, uh, years back and then I had to move apartments and I couldn't set it up properly. So this is like the return to form. Uh, I didn't like do always only do board game streams, but I like doing them from time to time. I'm definitely out of practice with doing them though. So... And this is not even a conventional board game. It's not like a Greek or something. Or Catan if we're even getting more popular. It's just like a super complicated niche war game, which is just kind of funny that I'm even bothering attempting this. But it's not like I'm going to get to play it in person too much. Um, let us see. Let us. Let us. Let us see. Um. So turn one. Oh yeah, we haven't even started the game yet. I've been streaming for like an hour and a half. I've mostly just been explaining the general what the rules are and um, what the premise is. It's, uh, I guess the most like, I don't know board games explanation is, this is Axis and Allies, but with a hex grid and um, smaller scale. Like instead of the world, it's uh, Sicily. 
the island of Sicily. And, uh, and, it, and it, like the movement and combat rules are closer to civilization than Axis and allies and more in some ways. And that's about, that's a general idea. There's lots of charts and tables, and we're about to roll on some. I need to remind myself when I roll, do certain rolls here. Namely, there's a game rule book as opposed to a series rule book. And we're looking for the coastal defense units. So essentially, let's zoom in really hard. So there's some sideways blue units, right? And I was just saying this before. Those units um, are going to have to roll to see if they automatically surrender because their morale is super low. And I believe it's a roll of, yeah, on one to four, it's just dead. On five, well, not dead, but surrendered. On five to six, it just fights normally. And you do this when any units are adjacent to them, I think. Um, first time any of these units are involved in any combat, that's when you roll. Okay. And you roll when. Roll after you declare the combat before you do any of the resource spending or anything. Okay. Okay. So it's a combat system. Nice. I uh, played Sage through most of uh, Stranger of Paradise, and uh, and that won me like most of my most of my fights. I haven't tried Void Knight yet. I think that's the only class I haven't unlocked. It's like a master class. But yeah, Strangers is really fun. I love how cheesy it is. Strangers of Paradise Final Fantasy Origin. Here to kill chaos. Absorbs magic. Okay. So, I think the first part of the turn that we're currently on is the amphibious landings. Because this is a beach assault, and we have to roll dice to see how well the beach assault people landed on the beach. More or less. I just need to remember where the page for the rules are. Unfortunately, I should staple these, this little rule book. It's just a printout, because this particular game came with the freaking magazine article. So it's just like, yeah, here, have a board game with it. Uh, no, 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 Operation Husky. It's like, here we go. Um, yep, did that. When fighter sweeps and other naval moves are done, make landing rolls, loyalty tests, and after landing moves in that order. Okay. Here we go. All right, let me read this. Try disaster. Oh, dang. That's really cool. Yeah, I haven't... Yeah, I don't know. I had trouble with that game. I played on action mode, and I just... I was bad at game and couldn't figure out most of the stuff. Alright. Now I need to remember how to... I need to stand up more during the day, too, if I'm going to play a game like this. I'm standing up and not sitting in my chair. Like a gamer. Maybe I should get a standing desk. Anyways, that's not really relevant. So, loyalty test and afterland moves. Well, wait a minute. The loyalty test, that's just during combat, though. Oh, interesting too. When these, uh, when the surrender units are flipped on their, um, uh, 
Okay, never mind. I need to roll Amphibious Landing. Playing on hard. Oh, dang, yo. Pro player. I couldn't... I'm glad I played on action mode because I was bad enough at the game as is. There's some hard fights in that game. So, um, I believe aircraft need to move and naval units need to move. And I kind of forget how that works because I haven't played this game in a while. Yeah, I agree with that full heartedly. It's definitely a Team Ninja game. It's got the Ninja Gaiden Neo combat style, both in difficulty spike and kind of like animations and stuff. You can tell it's Team Ninja, really. Very much feels like that engine. And I am totally willing to talk about Stranger Paradise right now instead of play this game uh, full heartedly because I cannot keep track of anything in this. Fighter sweeps. Now I don't even remember what fighter sweeps are. Yeah, I think the fighter aircraft, the fighter jets, all have to, well not jets, but fighter planes, have to fly around and do uh, attacks. Hmm. Let's see, where's air power? 14, section 14 of the rule book. Oh yeah. I don't know if you're used to these board games, but they uh, have like a bunch of legalese, so it's for, not section 14, it's section 14.0. We'll be looking under fighter sweeps here. Honestly, the case, what, like the way these rule books are laid out is actually kind of useful. Because I can say, oh hey, how do I do air combat? Oh, that's section 14.3, because it divides it. And it's like easy enough to find out where items are. Air combat procedure... No wait, air missions, we're looking for that. We're looking for fire sweeps. Engage enemy planes. Oh right, this is to stop them from... Uh... This is to stop them from making it harder for air landing to happen. Fighter sweeps. Thundering movement segments. Fighter sweeps. Fighter move to hex the active enemy aircraft. It's an air, air, air combat. And then mission fighters aboard into an air base. Hex can be the target of any number of fighter sweeps in a second. Okay. So the reason to do this is to Pelt enemy fighters or enemy aircraft to be inactive or to make them uh, lose damage to the aircraft. Yeah, okay. I need to remind myself. Um... Okay. Oh darn it, I um I messed up a rule, but that's okay. I barely messed it up. Did I mention that board games are hard? Board games are hard. Now let's look up Amphibious Landing. ALT. Under that is a naval. Naval rules are. Oh yeah, I got a. It's in the game rule book and not the series rule book. Uh, all right, ALT sequence. Percoast unit within two hexes and then use zone control. Hmm. I don't know 
why fighter suits matter here. I guess they just want you to do fighter suits beforehand. That makes sense. Alright. Well, we can get some fighter jets out and do this nonsense. Um. Alright, fighter missions. And we have so many active aircraft. I think they all start active unless noted otherwise, so. E. Anyways. Um. So we have a couple of aircraft here. I'm just gonna grab these. Yeah, I might do a fighter sweep. Say there's no reason to do one more than one. Why? Oh, I gotta remind myself how to do this game again. Urgh. I remember the basics, but like, but I don't remember enough to go through this well enough. I probably should have waited a day just to practice, but I just wanted to do like at least a test stream of board board game board game. Hmm. Air combat. I need to remind myself how air combat works. Series of rounds. Let's say there's left alone the hex. Mm hmm. We have their aircraft. Looks one of Okay. Yeah, if I leave the camera on too long, like every half hour it turns off, and I know there's a way to stop them from happening, and I forget what it is, because it resets the settings. Um... Oh, okay. Attacker select. Yeah, you just basically the defender selects an aircraft to fight. All right, let's do a fighter sweep. So, let's see. What fighters do we have? We have a bunch. So, like, all the... So, the, this particular system has an interesting fighting thing where... All right. Basically... There's aircraft off map, if you will, like they're in little holding boxes. And they have this number, see? This yellow number that eventually the camera will focus in on. Please focus camera. There's a bunch of numbers on this aircraft because it has all the stats. There we go. That yellow 67 is the amount of hexes it can move. You may notice this map has very, like, you could have an aircraft even like this fly very far that but it is off the map and it needs to come in through an air entry point which are no go away photo mode hmm let's see so essentially on the coastline there's this red line here um okay so there's this red line, and there's something that says AEP. Um, that's the aircraft entry point, and it's going to have a box number and say how many hexes it has already moved to get through there. Oh wait, this part, this actually can't reach that particular spot. 
We're going to have to get a long-range aircraft. Or maybe a Malta. Yeah, so like there's three air bases and they have different distances to that entry point. Hmm. Two, three. Yeah, man. So we're going to have to, so those aircraft are going to have to land on to a uh, base and they're captured. Okay. Hi, plushie. All right. So we'll start them round with air combat. We're going to have a, not this guy, because they're too far away to do anything. Unless they aren't. Oh yeah, they could actually fight the, uh... Yeah, we could take out some aircraft refits, at least. So, let me show an example of air combat here. We'll go to the west side of Sicily, next to Choo Choo Bear, from something positive comic. Um... Okay. And you'll just have to deal with the overhead lights. It is the battle for Sicily. Not even whatever. I mean, in World War II. It goes. Um, well, technically it doesn't go. We haven't started yet. We're about to start. I was just going the general rules and stuff. And, uh, you know, I mean, we all know the rules now, right? Yeah, surely. How is this Spitfire? I think I just put it back where it was. Okay. So, an aircraft is going to fly and do a fighter sweep from Tunisia. Let's see if I can zoom out just a hair. Ah, there it is. So it spent 40 hex move to land here. And then it's going to go one two, three, four, five, six, seven. So it's spent 47 move and it has 67, so it's fine. And it's gonna to totally attack this aircraft or attack one of the aircraft on this base, which can have, which there's two of. So it doesn't matter which one we're fighting. This aircraft is going to go and do a fighty fight. Yeah, you know, you got it. I mean, this is just a narrative playthrough anyways, you know. Uh, basically, we're in the part where the aircraft do all their um, fighter sweeps. So, like, the fighters, as opposed to the bombers. Or the air things that fight... We're doing air-to-air -air combat, more or less. And these fighters are going, I'm attacking this base. And we're going, okay. So, we have a one-on-one -on -one with these aircraft. So, it doesn't matter, they're both the same one. So, we're going to fight these two off. And... Now, how do we do air combat? Uh, grab a table. Okay. So, roll a... Do I roll flak for... Darn, do I roll flak for this? I don't think I do. Yeah, never roll flak for fighter sweeps, which is what we're doing. It is one of these fancy games, Trumpet, and hello. Hello, everybody. Uh, we're doing air-to-air -air combat, which is these units laid out here. They're actually over here, but we're just fanning them out so it's easier to parse. In fact, let's, let's zoom in on these fighty aircrafts. Fortunately, even with the steady cam, it may, like, the fact that I have this on the camera stand does make it a little hard to. Yeah, I hope this doesn't give too much motion sickness to people. All right, so these fighter aircraft, um, they both have a battle rating of, this says five, that says three. And I believe you add the attacker's air combat rating, so five. Subtract the defender's air combat rating, three, so it's plus two. Roll the dice. In the whiskey glass. Um, the red and the white are going to be the two dice I use. So we've got a... 
Well, you can't even see. Is that a snake eyes? That is a snake eyes. It's hard to see, but yeah, like, well, oh, snake eyes, which is two plus two, four, six or less attack robots. So this guy goes, oh no. And we'll probably be speeding up this process. I just wanted to show it off. Uh, so the allied aircraft goes, oh no, I is abort. And then we roll a die again. I'm going to roll the black die. And on a five or a six, the poor aircraft takes a step loss, which is basically a damage. And aircraft can take two hits before they blow up. So, um, we got a six, which is not a good number for that poor aircraft. Um, well, yeah, so, Mr. Plane here is now less effective in combat, and if it takes another hit, it blows up. So, that's a thing. And then these guys don't have to abort, and... Just chill. But we have, see this entire grid here? Those are all fighter planes. <laughs> hey Dos, good to see you. Or most of them are fighter planes, some of them are not, but like, there's so many planes that can just attempt to blow up stuff right now. So we're going to do that. I'm pretty sure they all can go too, which is hilarious to me. Yeah, because this game is willing to let me do that. Though it might not be the best idea. Uh, the one thing I want to remind myself of is the rule for this comp type of combat. Fighter Sweep. So yay, we officially did the first move of the game out of lots. And it only took, according to stream time, minus 15 minutes, so an hour and a half of explaining, generalizing, and reminding myself how to play this game. Alright, so normally in other types of aircraft combat, uh, you can only, like, bombard a, one, a hex once per turn, but you can do fighter sweeps, like com combat the fighters with any number of fighters. So we're going to get another Spitfire. I think that's what Spit V means, Spitfire the fifth. Here, let me show you what this looks like. Look at this little guy. Isn't he cute? Maybe not cute. This is war, but whatever. I'm the type of guy that draws anime eyes on war game plexiglass I am that person that monster anyways so another fighter is going to drop in say hello I'm going to fight you and they're going to be like oh no I am being fought and this guy is just a that's a ground unit we're only talking about the aircraft here we're fanning them out for ease of ease of use roll again with a different aircraft still seven plus two is nine that would mean the defender aborts so this aircraft is now inactive, and air combat only goes on, I think the attacker aborts no matter what, so... No, I think the attacker aborts at the end, but we do aircraft until we can attack this aircraft now. Yeah, there's a sheet of plexiglass, because this is not actually a board, it is a sheet of paper. Which is why that right there is actually a crease of plexiglass, yeah. Shave in an aircraft. 
two hits. I'm sorry, that was a really bad joke. Anyways. Um... Yeah, I gotta remind myself. Well, let's just... I'm going to assume I can keep fighting, because I think it's like air combat goes on until there's no side left. But the attacker leaves no matter what. Gosh darn it, I need to remind myself that that's actually the case. I don't want to get this wrong. It'd be cheating if I did. Cheating against myself. Uh, I'm silly. I mean, I'm freaking streaming a board game by myself. I think that says a lot. Uh, fighter sweep. Rounds of combat. Okay, we keep going. Keep going. But yeah, plexiglass. I have lots of plexiglass sheets solely for games like this. Anyways, yeah, you keep going apparently. So this fighter jet's going like, wee, and then they're going, woo. Oh yeah, and let me roll for the loss of that aircraft. Black die is a six. So the aircraft did take some hits enough to start smoking. All right, aircraft two. Oh, I rolled. Uh, I rolled box cars. That's definitely a hit. So this guy goes away. And a three. No loss. Okay. So these aircraft are now inactive, meaning they need to be refit next. They need to be resupplied to be active again. They can't do aircraft missions until then. Poor aircraft. They're all dead. I'm gonna mark these with a tile spacer because of course I have tile spacers to denote locations. Just around myself there's an airbase here. Airbase. Okay, and this person flies back to Tunisia. And okay. Hmm. What else? Uh, so now I need myself where the other aircraft are. There's some up here, but that's really far away. Let me see. Do I have any air fighter jet fighter aircraft that can do that? I have. Let's see. Oh, that has a lot of range. Um. Time to do some hex counting. Cause why not? Cause I can't math and my I can't geometry. So, the aircraft's going to enter from here. It costs forty hex move or forty points of movement to get enter here alone. And then this aircraft has a movement of or a range of uh, one hundred sixteen. So one, two, three, four. Um, yeah, that's way in range of this aircraft here. Uh, so let's have some more fighting. Uh, that has a lot of bomb rating, a lot of barrage rating, though. Uh, so I'm looking at this aircraft holding box here. And I'm thinking, oh, I can send this really long-range th fighter out. But this long-range fighter also has really good bombardment tools. So I kind of don't want to. It would make me sad. So I could go on a bombing run instead, and that'd be fun. Hmm. This jet only has a bombing rating of three. It has a long range, so... Ah, but it'd be even odds. Hmm. Only problem is this has four and this has four, and that means the defender. Oh, well, we could just keep throwing airship at them and see what happens. Okay, we'll do that. So this aircraft is going to fly all the way from Tunisia. Unless we have better aircraft, where? But uh, two, three, four, five. Yeah, we're going to get a better aircraft from Malta, which is in this little box here. 
It's going to go whoop. And then fly all the way up here. Fight this guy. It's a plus one roll for the aircraft, so... Uh, what is that? Five, that means the attacker loses. And we'll just use whatever the black die roll is right now. Four, no step loss. So, run away! This guy's like, ha 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 ha, I'm German. Or I'm Luftwaffe, and we're, they're evil, and we, we go grump. Alright, but I have four more Spitfires, so... I think they're Spitfires, I think that's what they're called. More, they're, the name on the counter just says Spit V. So, I mean, it could just be a Spit. But I'm pretty, but I'm pretty sure somebody said Spitfire on them, so... Alright, plus one again, roll the dice. I like this whiskey glass. Seven. Seven is both abort. And then we got to roll. So let's roll. White is, let's see, black is going to be the Luftwaffe and the white is going to be the Axe allies. Um, looks like the Luftwaffe take a loss. So, this poor friend... Oh, this guy's just dead now. We'll put the dead pile up here. They took the loss, and this guy did not. But they are inactive. Hmm, other aircraft sweeps. Okay. Zoom in a little bit. So I'm just looking for aircraft. Any aircraft. I put all the aircraft on uh, the top of each little stack of pieces. Because that's technically where they're supposed to go. To denote that oh hey aircraft are here. Ah. Camera, I need you to not be janky for the viewers. Okay. Music's still playing, right? Playlist is still going? Yeah, it's going. Okay. So we have that aircraft there. And that would be good to bombard. So we're going to send another Spitfire here. Which I know is in range just from, from Malta 20. It says range of 67, so yeah, it's definitely in range. Actually, Pantarella might be... Really send that, but yeah, we'll do a Spitfire. They're good combat units for aircraft. They're, they're good fighters, so... 5, 4, plus 1. Roll the dice! Ah, I love the sound of dice and whiskey. It's like shaking a glass. And it looks like, based off the way I rolled the dice, uh, uh, the Defender aborts and takes a step loss. Which means they flip over to their damage side and go under the airbase. Ah, but there's another fighter. I forgot there's more than, there's another one. So we roll for that. Um, this is a dice whiskey glass. So that's the attacker aborts, but no no loss. Whee! Try that again with another one. All right, uh, a ten and a three, or two fives for the ten and then the three. That means. And this fellow uh, becomes inactive, so we just bury them under the air base. And this guy goes, Wee! Back to Malta you go. Okay. And there we go. I really have, like. Yeah, I do. Okay. So, I think the only other active aircraft are... Oh, those are all the active aircraft. Damn. 
Oh wait, no, there's this... Oh, there's some really good fighters here. In Hex, in the town of... What? Where is this? This might not even be... A... It's like a little overpass. So there's like a little crossroad here. Right here, see that little airplane? That's another fighter. So the allied armies are definitely going to want to sweep this area. And we definitely still have multi air aircraft, so da 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 We'll just fan them out. Okay. And roll the dice. Okay. Uh one win for the allies. And the other one survives. So, but no damage to either side. I think the aircraft was down here, so. Uh, probably get another tile spacer out for this. Tile spacer. But we're gonna send yet another fighter, because there's just too many. Okay. Oh, no, that's a win for the uh, allies again. Commonwealth, so. Um, and that means there's no more active aircraft, meaning the fighter aborted from the mission. And ta -da, no aircraft left. And. What needs to be rolled for next? I should look at these guys. Okay. Just taking a look at all my pieces of the army. So, aircraft. The aircraft have done their sweeps. Their massive kicks. Their low kicks. Because it's a sweep. Get it? I'm, I'm sorry, that was really bad. Alright, what do you think, Utah Raptor? What should we do? Alright. So, next up. Um, comes me walking over the little wire I have for this camera to the computer. Because it's not on the ground, it's too short to be on the ground entirely, which is, you know, that's fun. Um, alright. I need to keep this rule book kind of out. Yeah, there we go. Or keep this page out. Let's see. Alright, so naval movement's gonna be next. <sighs> Gotta move the boats. And the boats are all the way in this corner. Right there. See that giant stack with the airplanes on it? The airplanes are on an aircraft carrier and the boats are... They're all technically all in that one hex where the planes are, but that's way too high of a counter stack. So I'm not... I'm not... I don't want to just knock over a bunch of pieces and make a Jenga tower of cardboard... Mock cardboard soldiers. So... Naval movement. There is a landing table, too. Range of ship barrage factors. So I think the first naval aspect is I want the... I want the navies to be in range of, um... Of the people landing, so they get a better job of uh, landing on the beaches and not getting destroyed, which is probably a good thing for the those guys. So, coastal artillery. Nope, not coastal artillery. Naval combat. I'm trying to see what they're ratings are.
Hmm. Yep, yep, yep. Ship rules, refit, don't care. Table combat. Yep, do care. Fire enemy ground targets once per turn. So ship only gets one attack per turn, ground targets. Naval targets. This reading is hard. Um, so basically I have to go through this section and be like, huh, where's all the where's all the navy? Um I'm trying to remember the unit icon iconography for uh Oh, that's their flak points, okay. Their range. Okay, so I, I actually have an idea now of what I'm supposed to do here. Ship flak. Oh, that's just missions against the hex. Okay, so we don't care about flak rating. This looks complicated. What do you mean? What do you mean this game with the series rules? Series being there's multiple games with this rule book. Look, this is only... 56 pages. Technically it's 50. There's like appendices and designer notes after page 50. Actually it's more like page 48. No, it's even earlier than that. Where, where the hell does this rule book end? This never ends! Page 40... 44, so... Okay, 45. 45 page rule book! Um, you, if you want to see a textbook... There's a game called Advanced Squad Leader. That game just never ends. That game, never ending rule book. It actually comes in a uh, binder instead of a... a like a standard, you know, binded, a bound book, because a three ring binder, so you can add more rules to it for each expansion. So that's fun. Anyways, this is actually a magazine game. Like, look at this. Here's the here's the magazine, and halfway in the middle of this rule book, or in the middle of this magazine, is a uh, is the rules. So like. You know, it has a bunch of articles, and then it just has a game inside it. Which is this game we're playing right now. It doesn't actually come with the series rules. You have to get an actual game for that, but... Yeah, I, I, this is just the series rule, rule book I borrowed from a different game in the series. Anyways, back to where we are. Uh, so i got to move my ships, and I want to move them. And the ships, again, are over here. I want to move these little ships. Um, they have a movement of 20 hexes, I think, in such a way that they are covering all of my little landing fronts, landing on the beach. So all the green and tan units are the um, allied forces, the US and Commonwealth, respectively. And they're all making beach landings in Sicily, in 1943? Is this 1943? Yeah. See, it's a historical game. Which is cool. You, you've seen those games on Steam, probably. Like the history games, Greg, Greg Gigsby's War in the East and stuff like that. It's like those, or the Matrix games, but a board game. This is what those games are based off of. So, I think these aircraft have a movement of 20 hexes. If they're slow, they have 10. Uh, yeah, it's a paper map, so uh, since it creases and folds and stuff, these counters would just fall over. So yeah, I have a uh, plexiglass over it, and then I take the sheets, which is uh, so that they don't move around too much. All right. These U.S. destroyers, the destroyers have a range of three, the cruisers have a range of four. I want to get, like, 
for this. So essentially they want to cover the landings on these little aircraft or these little uh, landing boats. And then we're going to make a lot of die rolls. Dice, dice rolls. You roll dice. And 25 ship barrage factors. So what that lingo means is this yellow number on these little ship markers, these ship counters, if you will. Here, see how there's like a little yellow number? That one says 12. Well, I want that number to add up between the range, ships in range to uh, 20, was it 28 or 25? 25. And unfortunately, so that means math. Condition. What's really annoying though is that that means a stack of two destroyers is only 24. So if they made the ship, if they made that combat number one point higher, these would, just two of these would be enough, but as it stands we need like more than that. All right. So, let's see if all of this is in, in focus in the camera. In the camera. I'll do something like that. Okay. That should be good. Anyways. And. These destroyers have a range of three hexes, so but so they can move easily enough here. This is definitely you know, within ten hexes or twenty. Range of three, so one, two, three, one, two, three. That's good. Then put one here. Right? Yeah. Three, one, two, three. That's 24 for us. So that has 24 now. But we want a cruiser. But do the aircraft carriers have bombard factors too? That would be nice. No, they don't. They just have CV. I don't even know. I don't think the air, the ship, I don't think the airplanes count for this. So let's not do that. But. All right, if we put a ship right here, it goes one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, or one, two, three, four, yep. One, two, three, four, five. It's not in range of this one, though. We could do that. One, two, three, and that's still, that keeps it far away, but within range. All right, so that covers these for the extra die roll. We'll put, hmm. Let's say, let me just put another stack right here, and that should give me enough for everybody. All right, so that's 36, and the board is access wire all the pieces squares. Oh, you don't even know the, the pains of that. There's actually hex games too, but uh, <laughs> um, there's actually a game um, that care that wants you to care about the direction of the pieces. Uh, so in order to so they have so basically you pick one corner of that of that uh, piece, and then you actually have to rotate it facing the hex spine. So like if you want this airplane to face say that tile right there, you do it like that or that or that or that. Isn't that fun? I don't know if it's showing on the camera, but yeah. Long story short, that game's obnoxious. This is thankfully not one of those games. But yeah, it is a little weird that the hexes... That's, that threw me off when I first played. Or they could even be spheres if they're not, you know, but whatever. Alright, anyways. Um... So now for the British, let's see, what's in range of four here? 
for is probably a good spot for it, but yeah, let's do it here. For the cruiser and destroyers. Let's put one here. And the other three right here. And they're safe. Hey! It gets really awkward. Oh my, yeah. Playing that particular game was... I'm, I actually might do that game on stream one time too. That'd be fun. It's called Advanced Squad Leader. I, I would do the starter kit though. Even that's really complicated. Right so, um, so, the Navy's moved, I think what happens next is, I really should get a rug or something, my feet are feeling the surface of this hardwood. Um, after landing moves. Why, is, why do they want you to take loyalty tests right now? That's the question. Because that's only during combats. Well, it doesn't matter. Um, hmm. Alright, well, let's do the amphibious landing table rolls. All the. Which is all these guys. So. Um. There. You roll a single die. Is it a single die? No, it's two dice. Okay. And how many rolls do you make for this one? It looks like there's two rolls. There's two ships there that are landing on the beach. So we're rolling here twice. And. The modifiers are per coastal defense unit within two hexes, there is one. In an enemy zone of control, that is also true. Zone of control is just the hexes around an enemy. So minus two, plus one because there. Cargo load is all commando, marine, and SP. These are definitely marines. SP, so it's a flat roll, and we are in open terrain? Open terrain. Okay. I rolled a six. A six, and openville is five. I need five or more to win. So yay, they all landed. It's success. Landing craft survive, and cargo is okay. What do we have here? Messages and chats. Hey. Yeah, thumbs up. Okay. Um. So they've landed. We got to roll for the other line of people. Oh yeah, we have to roll for... that's just the top guys. Let's just set them aside. Next to their ducks. Uh, I'm... <laughs> so, the game actually calls these ducks, and uh, the reason for that is because they call, are called D-U-K-W, right? So that's actually a landing craft, and they're the ones that can turn the trucks when they land. They're like mobile amphibious machines. I don't know if they have a duck icon on them, though. They just look like a thing. Anyways, that's done. Um, Alright. Flat roll for the other guy. Same roll. 
Oh no, it's minus one now because it's not... This is an infantry division and not marines. I rolled a five, which turns into a four, which is a mixed roll. And mixed is... Landing craft or destroy... Landed units are disorganized. Okay. Well, rip landing craft. Um, these guys are disorganized, which means we put a little marker on top of them, a counter, if you will, that has the letters DG in our explosive. Look at this explosive counter. And... That is on this guy. Ah! Chucks. Let me see here. That's... So now we... Now I pull my stacks up, and there we go. Probably put the duck under... Here. Uh, okay. That's two. Hmm. Where are we with the Path of Exile soundtrack for what it's worth? I let me see here. I really should have moved the chair out of the way. Standing up isn't. Thank you. <sighs> So all that is just every 30 minutes, the camera lens is like, oh, I'm going to go to sleep mode now. So, uh, that's fun. But, uh, it doesn't matter. Uh, yeah, there's a, I just, because it reset all its settings and that's when it turned on and I'm just very annoyed at that. I think it keeps it on if recording's long, but like, obviously that's... Not turned on. All right, so landing craft here. Okay, this is going to be a minus one as well. No, it's just going to be a even roll for all this. Even roll. Da -da 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 -da. Okay, sorry. Um, I rolled a nine. So, they're okay. That's only one roll. How many rolls for this guy? Just one duck as well. And that... is gonna be a minus one, I think? No, that's gonna be an even roll. Actually... Uh, amphibious Landing Table, why did I move you out of my arm's reach? Darn it. Um, two hexes. This plus one. Okay, this this is a, this is an up one as well. Oh, no, this is even. Okay, success on both the chords on this guy. Four games put my camera to sleep, damn. You know they might, yeah. This shit's barn! Yeah. Oh, this is, yeah. So, congrats, both of these made it. Yeah. Alright, now for this big boy. There's also an open terrain. Okay. We have... Minus one, minus two, plus one. I think this is down one. Let's see. Yeah, down one. I rolled a five, which is success. Um, so that takes care of the top stack. Alright, the one under it 
the same roll. Success. I'm not going to show the dice for every one of these, just pretend I'm being honest. Alright, last one on the bottom stack. Uh, what do we got? Huh? Yeah, I rolled high on all of those, so... Yay! All the troops land safely here. Oh. Hmm. Actually, I think... The, uh... I rolled a 5 when I should have rolled a... Which was down 1, so... Where's the infantry? That was the first guys. These guys... Lost their landing craft. And got disorganized. The poor saps. Okay. These guys down one. Uh, I rolled nine, which is turned to eight. Again, open terrain, so we're fine. Oh, what next? So that takes care of the US armies. Now for the Commonwealth. Um. Yeah. Hmm, let's see. This requires three bowls. Was that right there? Was that where I put it? Darn it, I misremembered. Sorry, I'm getting a little flustered. Well, not flustered, but burnt brain melting from all of this nonsensical hoover dashery, hooba dooby dee doo. Also, my feet are hurting because I'm out of shape and standing up on the floor too much. All right, let me see here. Fifty-five and six. No, it's the yeah, fifty-five and six. Uh, trying to remember the hex. Coordinates. Let's see. Nope, oh, it's fifty-four. Oh, two. Yeah, fifty-four. Okay, we're fine. We're fine. That's fine. Two rolls. Okay. Top roll. Is really low and it's a yeah this is a failure so the top roll failed which is unfortunately the good one the duck and on a failure roll landing craft and half of the cargo are destroyed at least half landed units are disorganized okay so, poor duck. The duck has died. Um, and half the cargo. The cargo being supply points, and that's, let's see, so one whole supply point down, and disorganized marines. Get more DG counters. Alright, I roll two. Roll to four, minus two, plus one. Yeah, that's a failure. Actually, no, that's down one. That's three. That's mixed roll, I think. So this is just disorganized. I mean, crap. Destroyed. Bidja. Okay. 
So a very disorganized roll here, which is not good. That means they have less movement and combat effectiveness and are generally not in a great position to do anything. This guy is, let's see, minus one, plus one, minus two, this down one, that one. I rolled a five, which is success on open terrain. Is that open terrain? Open village? Yeah. Okay. So this guy's fine. No. I'm pointing to the... Yeah, you can see it. Hopefully. This giant stack here is next. Oh, no. There's so much giant stackiness. I like how the music's probably super dramatic right now. I actually have it muted. I'm just here in the silence right now. And I'm doing like this incredibly boring stuff, which is fine. Gosh darn it, where did I put the hajaz again? No, 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 no. Oh, no. I just, oh, it's over here next to the nice. Okay. How many rolls am I doing right now? Okay. Stop going to sleep, camera. It's not that boring. Well, it is, but... Three rolls. For 55.06. Okay. We'll do the top roll. Which is, let me just do this math here. That's minus one, minus two, plus one. Wait, did I put these are in the right range? I didn't. Oh, okay. Well, I would have put these in the proper range if I did not. Okay. I'm just on this. Yeah. There we go. Might be this would be right here. I don't think of combat range. So here. Three. Four. Yeah, that's better. Okay. I'm not I I think that's fair to re redo, redo, but either way, let's just assume that's what it looks like right now. Alright, anyways. Um Shit, where was it? Expecting the, is this stack first? Okay, so minus one, two, plus one, minus one. I rolled a eight down to a seven. Open terrain. So minus one for the first one, minus one for the second. Rolled an eight. And what about the last stack of rolls? It's same people. I rolled a, okay, this is a total failure, so. Okay. Failure roll. So this is down to two. This is destroyed. This is gone and replaced with a two token. I a six. You're disorganized. It DG. But the rest of the craft is fine. Shucks. Dropping units left and right, they're falling, everybody. On ya. Ah, one more stack. We're almost done with this gargantuan endeavor. 
Uh, this is two rolls, so first one is minus two plus one. Okay, down one. Yeah, that's fine. What about the one below it? It's all marine must be. That's an even roll. Okay, even roll for the last one. Okay. Landings. Landings have been done. They are done. We are free. Okay. Now movement. Um, hmm. I need to sip my coffee to help my brain. Green. Unfortunately, I need to remember the rest of the game now. Because I need to remember supply rules. Because unfortunately, I am fairly certain I need to get support supply. I need to Look into rules about supports and supply and stuff like that. I'm pretty sure. Do you have any landing supply? Our LST units. I do. I can make a. I can deploy some ports. Need to look at the rules for that, which I don't want to do on stream. But, but I might have to. Uh, honestly, I might have to take a break from the stream right now and call it here. Uh, we rolled for... To, so in summary, what we did. The fighters um, took out uh, some aircraft. The armies have landed. Next up, they will move and attack the coast uh, next time, which will probably be later today. Honestly, I just need to brush my feet. But more importantly, I need to read the rules again, which uh, is something I don't want to do immediately on stream. I'll cross-reference rules, but I'm not going to... I need to, like, do a deeper read that I don't want to waste on stream just yet. Because it's been too long since I've played. Yeah, I think we'll um, resume this later today. I'm gonna t or uh, some point. It's definitely gonna be next stream, whatever the case. So yeah, stream done for now, at least for this uh, particular endeavor. This was um, this is definitely 